Ooh. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but Ben, will it bot? Maybe. Will these? Hello, everybody. I am Ben from Team Panic. I'm still in the UK, and this time I am with Oliver of Team Morton Bailey, uh, and we are actually going to be doing a very, very interesting video today. But uh, before we do that, say hi, Oliver. Say what you do. Hi, Oliver. What do you do? <laughs> Uh, I build Beetle Weights in the UK scene. This is Crossblow. This is the third iteration of that that is being retired after Rapture. And uh, otherwise, I do occasional YouTube stuff. Past projects include the ESC podcast and No More Spinners. Very much so. Those were very cool things, uh, especially uh, ESC. But yeah, unfortunately, that's not really a thing anymore. Uh, there will be links in the description to where you can find Oliver and Oliver things. Uh, Oliver is also responsible for Barber Surgeon. Unfortunately, the robot I didn't get to fight with Annie at Rapture. I was really looking forward to that, but I was also looking forward to that. But also, it means that the robot is more intact for the event it's doing this weekend, as of the recording of this video. Yes, yeah, well, that's uh, <laughs> that's a, that's a thing. I mean, Annie needs to be intact for an a same event or a event the same weekend, I should say. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully the robot will be working a little bit better than it was at Rapture um, by this weekend. We will see. Yeah, but instead of fixing our robots, we're going to be doing a Will It Bot. And this is actually the most interesting Will It Bot we've done because we are doing competing Will It Bot videos. Uh, I, in front of me, have a bunch of Scottish tat. I have gone to a number of gift shops which are very uh, tourist trapped and uh, themed and bought a bunch of stuff, including coasters, uh, the cool little rubber ducky cow that you saw at the start of this, some playing cards, some pencils, uh, and I'm going to try and build a robot out of this. Meanwhile, Ben and I have been chatting um, with some friends about weird robot ideas, and one of the things that came out of that was what if you did a billet out of hot... So my initial thought is that we take something like this appropriately themed tin, and we use that as a mould. Um, of course, if we're sticking glue in a mould, we're going to need to have a way to get it out. So if we line it with foil, keep all the sides warm. We can yeah. then take these glue sticks, which don't quite fit on their own. Oh, damn. That's, the tin's just a little too small. <laughs> well, this is what happens when we go tourist hat shopping. Yeah, it's true. You get what you can get, hey? You get what you can get. Uh, but if you snip just a little bit off the end, as I've done on this one, they will fit quite nicely, and we will get quite a nice ant-shaped sized robot. I've got the wiring loom here, and you can see that motors-wise, speed controller-wise, and battery-wise, it scales quite well. I don't know whether or not it's going to be in weight. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, when you're using a, I guess, new material? Like, hot glue is used in a lot of ants, but not for an ant. <laughs> like No, but also, it's a billet. So this is as heavy as it will get. Once we've made it, we'll just start taking weight off of it to fit all of the components in. True, true. All right, let's get, I guess, lining and snipping and going. <laughs> I have no idea how well this is going to work. Well, I don't think anybody does. It's going to be a first. And now we wait. Or I guess, more accurately, we're going to work on mine. So, I have a couple of different things here. I have the cow rubber duck, I have the coasters, I have the playing cards, and I have the pens. Uh, and... I kind of want to build a thwack bot. What I'm thinking is that these coasters, which haven't opened yet, but let's do that now, are uh, literally going to make stupid wheels. They are pretty stupidly large. Yeah, I mean, and I think the thing with these is that I'm either going to get one or two of them as a wheel, and that's going to take up a ton of weight, really. <laughs> but if we like... Ha! Look at... Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> but, of course, that would mean, like, motors out the neck. I think we're going to have to do motors out the inflatable, maybe? Possibly. 
but then you're going to need to mount them to something firm. And... Well, I've got more coasters that we can just like jam up in there. Um, although that's going to mean cutting off the bottom, which totally possible. Uh... You will lose the squeak though. Well, one last squeak for good measure. <laughs> And it's not a very good squeak, is it? No, no, I think it's just because it's just a tiny little hole in there. Um, it's not actually got a squeaker in it, but probably. Oh, didn't destroy it. Look at that. <laughs> um, all right. This is, I think, one of the weirdest things I've done for a Will It Bot episode. I think this is uh, technically called butchery. <laughs> Do I, I'm getting another degree right now. <laughs> Those of a nervous dis disposition, please look away now. Well, hey, we're not, like, decapitating the cow. Yet. Yet <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, so inside, it's kind of interesting, because it's not really a flat surface in there, which I guess I kind of wasn't expecting. Um, but, oh wow, <laughs> these are going to need to be cut down quite considerably as well. Next thing we're probably going to need is holes for motors. Now I kind of need to decide where I want them because where they go will depend on like how high up the cow is in placement, which I think if they're under this little board, they're going to have a lot of cow head sticking over and if they're over, they're going to stick out of the side of the cow, but I'm going to get less cow head. But I was also thinking double cow head. <laughs> Which, I mean, more cow head. More cow head. Because this will make this like a real thwack bot. In actual fact, uh, this is the point where we say, those with a nervous disposition, please look away now. Also, uh, if you're at home and um, underage, don't do this. Be safe with your scissors. I don't know. You come here to Scotland <laughs> to visit, be a tourist, to take in the sights, and now you're desecrating our national animal. Well, I'm not, it's not a unicorn. We're fine. This is true, but... It's just a cool. Cool. It's so, I, like, it's, it gets me every time that, word, that the word is very, very co close to actual cow. <laughs> <laughs> That's Scots for you. It's very close to actual English. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's... That's all. That's too good. That's stupid, and I love it. Um, but I think we do need to cut the cow down a little bit. I think about yay much cow out of the cow is a good idea. <laughs> Less cow, more cowbell. Something along those lines. Let's check on the hot glue. It is working. That is melting really nicely. There's a little bit in the middle here that still is yet to, uh, to fully liquidate. But, I reckon we could add a little bit of extra in there to fill up the, uh, the rest of the tin. And uh, we'd be looking really good with that. I think this is going to work. Impressive, really! <laughs> Next we've got to see if we can try and demold this. I don't know how well the foil will have helped with that. So we shall have to see how easy this is going to be to work with. Immediately that feels like that might not have worked very well.
see just in opposite corners there we have had a little bit of leakage despite my best efforts but uh, so I think it's worth pointing out what the mold looks like at this point <laughs> Fortunately, we do have another tin in case we need to make any more. So agreed. Right. Well, let's. Can you get the alfoil off? Is the next question. Potentially not. Some of this, right. some of this, I did double layer to try and avoid leaks, and that's gonna fall, that's gonna come off. Well, you might have an alfoily hot glue robot. <laughs> so the solid HDP block comes out at. 74.4 grams and when you add things like the drive circuit and the battery 120 grams Ooh, yeah that's not weapon adding territory that is add forks and you're done son this is true but we do have all of this material in here to remove true, um, true. I could say generously we might be removing about a quarter or maybe even as much as a third of the material here we could get this chassis down to 50 grams if we're um, really be being better. vicious with what we remove so i think we might still have the potential to add a weapon to this thing we will just have to wait and see how things pan out once we have the drive off so wait is a good question i'm gonna run coasters for wheels a big duck and a bit of coaster in the the middle for a board a whole pencil as a weapon, which let's just jam that down in there where it's going to go. Uh, and then we've got electronics somehow, and we're already at 140 grams. Is there Ooh. a battery around? There is a battery around. There is a battery, uh, and that gets us to 153. Okay, well, the pencil can shorten down because that's a lot. We might have to skeletonize the wheels a little bit because we still need to get wheel hubs in. Uh, and we might also need to uh, skeletonize our friend here. Maybe cut the tail off? I don't know. This is going to be interesting to try and work out. So that is a base slash top plate, uh, which you can see doesn't actually fit in here right now because the motors need to stick out the side. So we're about to cut into the life raft and have the motors basically up here. We may even need to cut into the cow a little bit more, which we kind of need to anyway for weight reasons. Uh, and then it's going to be a case of trying to attach this in here, probably some super glue, probably some, I don't know, hot glue, maybe some screws. It's going to be an interesting one, but the next thing is saying goodbye to the cow. <laughs> uh, well, parts of it, anyway. <laughs> oh no. Hey, it'll all be covered up by the wheels and the motors later. Nobody will notice the holes you've cut in the side of the cow. The, the, the extra leg holes. <laughs> Alright, time to try and get this into here. So of course the question is, did that help? One of the old ones is 20 grams. Whoa. Oof. No wonder they needed 
this. All right, this one is 16. Four grams is not bad. So that's an eight gram loss in total. Eight gram loss in total. We can definitely work with that. All right, uh, time to do the next one. Okay, so while Ben has been working on his tatbot, I have also been busy. I have clear, cleared and cleaned up the billet as much as I can and removed as much of the foil. And I have remarked out where all the components are going to go. I don't think I have enough space within the size of this billet to chop something off to make a wedge. So I might have to make some hot glue forks uh, at some point, but we are about to start the crucial process of actually billeting this out, taking away material from the top like a CNC machine would, and making space for all of these components. As expected, this has been very messy so far. Um, you can see all of the glue here, and it's even ended up on my safety glasses. It's so glad... ended up further than that. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, we have sort of put up some boxes and things to try and uh, protect the rest of the, the room from getting covered in hot glue, but... The other way around. We do have... slots or two motors that seem to sit at about the same height. Um, so the next job now is to make some space for these wires and to make a recess for this speed controller. We've still got a long way to go on this and yeah, it'll be uh, interesting. <laughs> but I've committed to this now, um, so we're gonna make it happen. And we have wheels, and in fact we have a pair of wheels. I have now weighed all of this again, and we're actually looking like we might come in just under weight, which I did not expect to come in under weight with this in play. <laughs> uh, but it looks like we're basically ready for a final assembly because I've also cut a base plate. This is two playing cards back to back, uh, and it fits in rather nicely, and it's basically all we're gonna do for that, I think. Although it probably needs a little hole for a switch. But other than that, ready to rock and roll. Thing is, Ben, if the robot's going to be in weight, you know what you've got to do? Yeah, what's that? You've got to take it to an actual tournament. Ooh, yeah. All right, we are at moment of truth time. I've got electronics in, base plate on, cows in all the cow spots. And it's time for wheels. Which, this is going to be very, very interesting yeah, indeed. Yeah, so there's a very, a very tight press fit, so you might want to hold the motor as you do it. Yeah, I'm going to try. Just also trying to work out exactly which way around. I mean, can't really hold the cow, because the cow is... If I try and hold the cow, then you... Oh, can... the cow is squishy. The cow does not help. Well, I can hold the cow while you hold the motor. Mm. So you don't have to at least worry about holding things in the right direction. No, I think just uh, leave that as is. We might even just throw a bit of hot glue on it. And That's a good idea. Hot glue. It's going to fix everything. And I'll just take a piece of your robot. <laughs> Barely. Well, but it might work. It might work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cow. Oh, and you rest on the tail. Okay. We might still need to cut that off yet, but... Oh my god. <laughs> what have I what have I done? It's beautiful. I love it. <laughs> it's very very silly. There we go. That is the Highland Tatbot. What does it have a name? Scotland forever. <laughs> uh, 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 all right. Time to uh finish the hot glue bot. There we go. That was a lot Messy. I don't know. I was expecting it to be very messy, but it was very messy. We've since had to clear all the table. I've changed my t-shirt. 
hot glue went everywhere and the lovely straight and smooth sides of the billet as it came out of the tin have kind of been messed up a little bit by all the extra hot glue. However, we do have something of a billet. Space for motors, space for receiver and speed controller, and space for a battery. Uh, but we are running very thin. Uh, you can kind of see, particularly in this area, exactly how thin the base plate of this is in order to get everything in the robot. So, we have to make a robot from this. Well, currently everything, let's double check, that's the shorter side of the wire, pretty much fits. It is a beetle. No, not a beetle. An ant. Definitely not a beetle. <laughs> it, is, we, it is quite late when we are recording this and uh, I'm having a brain fart. But it is an ant way. It is a robot. So, we have to make some decisions from here. First thing is, I was wondering about perhaps doing a hot glue top plate, but this is messy enough as it is, so let's add a little bit of rigidity by taking the lid of the tin that we cast the whole billet in in the first place, and feeding in some wires. Um, there we are going to need to do a little bit of tweaking to the edges of this so that the motors sit inside the edge here. But that's fine, that's a very easy job. Now, we come to the weapon. I thought I would embrace my own little bit of tourist tat. Ben and I recently went to the Falkirk Wheel, which is a rotating boat lift. And I thought this very cool keychain would make a very fun rear flail. I plan to attach this with a hot glue stick. What else? It is the hot glue billet robot. And uh, I think if we just melt the end of this and heat it just enough, not so that it melts and uh, liquefies, but enough that it becomes a little bit more pliable and persuasive. In fact, even just doing that with my hands there has started to put a bit of a bend in it. We can make a loop. We can hook this on and uh, we can attach it like so. The other thing I would like to consider with this is adding some wedgelets. We don't really need them. Uh, Ben's robot, uh, Scotland Forever, is a flakbot. It's not playing a ground game, but it, I think adding the wedgelets will make this robot look a little bit more complete. So again, let's use some hot glue sticks. So we're on day two, robots are, well, they look together, unfortunately we, uh, we, we, we have some news. Yeah, unfortunately somehow in the process of transplanting electronics from one half finished robot, which I have working, into hot mess, the ESC has decided it doesn't want to play. Uh, I've got power running through it to the receiver, but the uh, power light on the uh, speed controller and the motors are completely dead. So, unfortunately, Hot Mess is not going to run and we don't have time to fix that. And we did suppose, well, there's supposed to be parts coming in, but uh, even if they came in in the next like 20 minutes, we wouldn't have time to get them in the robot and then film and then get me to the airport because uh, I'm about to head home because I've got fights coming up. So, uh, we can't do that. However, uh, Scotland Forever does actually work, so uh, what we were going to do is just run some Scotland Forever around a little bit because this is honestly hilarious and I do want to see how well cork wheels work <laughs> as an idea. So, yeah, Hot Mess has turned out to be even more of a hot mess than I was expecting, but I'm <laughs> more than happy at this point for you to just have a go at bullying it and, uh, and see what you can do. 
Fair. I mean, I don't think that the wooden thing is going to do anything against your metal lid, but it will make a good noise. Also, I feel like you definitely cursed yourself when you called it hot mess. <laughs> that may have been your downfall there. Hey, so. this is coming from the person who named a robot. It works. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a fair fair point. All right, let's uh, let's power up the cow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a horn. The horn's gone already. Oh wow. How does it feel? Uh, it feels very slippery. <laughs> if the wheel's on a wood surface, you're not going to have a huge amount of traction. That swack feels incredible though. It's like, there's a lot of force behind that. the table. <laughs> but survive the fall. And there it goes. And it's gone again. <laughs> I say though, survivability, not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. <laughs> and the wheel has come off. Okay, I think we call it there. Oh. Well, congratulations, Ben, on a technicality, <laughs> winning our fight. On a technicality. I mean, I think that's the second time that's happened while I've been over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't rub it in. <laughs> oh, anyway, this has been really fun, and hopefully if you can uh, get new parts for Hot Mess, we might talk about it in the future and... Uh, yeah, hopefully you can you can get it working and take it somewhere and do something with it. There are a couple of events coming up that I'm going to that will have Antarinas uh, at them. So yeah, if I can ha get some time to sit down and uh, just resolder a new speed controller in there, then absolutely, I would love to come back and uh, chat about how this thing actually works. <laughs> Cool. All right. We'll talk to you then. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it from us. Hope you guys have enjoyed this one and we will see you, or I will see you in the next video. <laughs>